Saturday Night Theatre. This is All India Radio, AIR Bombay. The time just coming up to 11.30. Pip Emma and it's Bunny Bender putting more dip in your head. More glide in your stride with Disco Dance Time. And to kick off, set to rock it to number one, the newest release from the one and only Johnny Bull. Yesterday she wouldn't see me. Our ocean is not free. But she's just gone on the phone saying, We present Sam Dastor as Inspector Ganesh Gote in Inspector Gote Hunts the Peacock, a play for radio by Jeffrey M. Matthews, based on the novel by H. R. F. Keating. Inspector Gote Hunts the Peacock. Wives, to be wasting time is such rubbish. Are you mad? If I am mad, it is because of you only? Midnight, and you are just coming home? I'm sorry. I was intending to telephone, but... Situation... First, they are handing me two cases at the same time. Both number one priority. Then, just as office is closing, DSP is sending for me. I cannot get official car, so I'm having to take bus to his house. So for the DSP, it is home. But for you... It is duty, Protima. And when is not duty... Always it is Inspector Gote come here, Inspector Gote go there, ectam out, ciao. Never, Ganesh, bye. Go home. See if your wife is needing you. But now I am home. And what is the first thing you do? Stop my music? It is noise I am stopping. So maybe you are not liking. But singer like Johnny Bull is number one star. So somebody must be liking. Now sit. I will get you some food. I am not hungry. Also, I must pack suitcase. Pack suitcase? Why? Reason why I am seeing DSP is... You've heard of uh, Superintendent Kefkar? He is director of narcotics, yes? Yes. And this morning, Kefkar is having appointment with Minister of Arts and Police Affairs. Uh, but uh, outside the minister's office, he is having accident. Slipping on mango skin, hitting his head, breaking both arms also. So obviously they are needing top class CID officer to investigate major crime. Major crime? Yes. To discover who is dropping mango skins in ministry precincts. Oh. I am sorry, Ganesh. But sometimes I am wondering who you married. Me or police? Now, drink this lassie and tell me the real reason why Kefkar is wanting you. England? Superintendent, sir? You are sending me to England? London, Gooty. You leave tomorrow. Yes, sir. Scotland Yard are damn worried by UK drug problem. So they are holding international conference to find solution to smuggling. Discussions between top echelon officers only. Top echelon officers? Damn fool doctors will not permit me to travel. Sir, DSP Jivan, DSP Hiralal even... Are they not able to go? Don't be a damn fool, Goaty. Both would jump at the opportunity. Then? Think, man. They are my deputies. Have equal rank. So how can I send Jivan on such a plum job and overlook Hiralel? Or vice versa. That is why you are selecting me. Now, instructions. First, text of my speech there. Now, you will deliver it word for word, exactly as written. Yes, sir. Second, you will attend every session, make notes, and provide me with complete pressing. And finally, Inspector, you will remember at all times that you are ambassador representing India and me. So, Protima, responsibility is great. For you, Ganesh, responsibility is not problem. It is English winter. You will be needing overcoat. I will buy in London. Why? Suddenly you are crore party, millionaire? My father, 
after coronation visit, is bringing back excellent overcoat. Here. See? It is like new. Come, try. Ah, it is fitting you like glove. Yes, but, Protima, your late father, he was very extrovert person. So? I am CID officer. This coat, the colors. Green and yellow only? Known as a tartan check pattern. They are Scottish colors. I am thinking maybe for me to wear, especially in England, would not be correct. And why not? Is not British police headquarters located in place called Scotland Yard? This is a passenger arrival call. Will Mr. Garnish Goat, Garnish Goat, recently arrived from Bombay on Air India Flight 504, report to room 422. Mr. Goat to room 422. Ah, uh, Potter. <laughs> I am looking for room 422, please. Customs investigation? You're quite sure? It is where I am expected. Oh, better get you there then, and I? Come on. It's your first visit? Yes, I am just arriving. But uh, you, obviously, you are a long-time resident. Uh, oh, the accent. Well, I was born here, wasn't I? But Mum, Dad, uh, they're from Amritsar. You been there? It is a long way from Bombay. So, you are sick. That is me on the black sheep. What do you think of London? Oh, all I'm knowing about London is from school, university, BBC. But now you're here. The picture is somewhat different. <laughs> I'm expecting Big Ben, Houses of Parliament, Thames River, all to be here as I step off aircraft. And all you find is this terminal, glass, concrete, same as the one you just left. No, here is different. People are moving with purpose, efficiency. And the air, it is clean. And back home? Dirt, poverty, it is the accepted picture. Not by my dad. For him it's cricket, riding, hunting. And mum, weddings, a village, how many kids her sister's got. And uh, what is your picture? Don't have one. It is a foreign country. Take, for your kindness. Uh, no, uh, have this one on the house. And uh, enjoy your stay. Enter. Morning. Morning. Uh, go to you, sir. Uh, Bombay CID. Ah, oh, found your way here, all right. Excellent. Well, welcome to England and to the emergency conference on the smuggling of dangerous drugs. Everyone's coming except for your number one. Uh, you are aware of reason, his accident. But he is sending regards and apologies. Ah, uh, reciprocated. And now, let's uh, get you to your hotel. Ah, uh, overcoat? You do have one. Overcoat? Yes, it is in a uh, suitcase. I'd uh, get it out, old man. Bit nippy. Wouldn't want you to catch pneumonia. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm not at all cold, but... Uh, yes? Toilet. I should like to, if it does not present problem. It is a long drive to your hotel, so across the corridor before the problem gets insoluble. At last, at last I am finding you alone. What? Please, 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 what are you doing? Pleading, begging, only you can help. Your niece, niece, she is dead, assaulted, murdered. And my wife is trans. What rubbish is this you are talking? Is it Ganesh Gorte? Yes. Yes. Now who are you? Who am I? Who? I am Vidur. Vidur Tata. Your wife? Protima? Who else? I am husband to her cousin. You are not knowing me? Uh, yes. Now what about my niece? She is not actually your niece cousin. She is niece of my wife. Is that a girl? Beautiful. And she is missing three weeks now. You said dead. Missing dead, who knows? But for three weeks she is not at home. Mira and my wife is making life hell. I see. 
I'm sorry we meet in such circumstances. Then you are not going to help? Family tradition, I mean nothing? <laughs> Cousin, if girl goes missing, it is matter for local police. Are you not top CID wallet? But here I have no jurisdiction. You have reported matter to British police? And what have they done? Nothing. No, believe me, cousin, here if India may be involved, they care not one damn thing. Only about licensing laws do they care. This I cannot believe. It is truth, cousin, truth, I swear it. <laughs> Stand up, man. Calm your sense. <laughs> now, tell me exactly what action police took after you reported situation. They sent woman policemen only. One woman. She asked questions? Questions, everything she wanted to know. She examined the girl's belongings? Into everything she poked and pried. Exactly what I would expect from competent officer. Then what? Nothing. All she is saying is that Rani, uh, that is girl's name, has run away only. That her name will go on list of missing persons. And that was three weeks ago? Yes. So when your wife is telephoning saying you are on way, it is gift from heaven. Uh, now the, the girl... Rani, how old is she? She is 17 and so beautiful. Cousin, all day I have waited for this moment. Every flight from Bombay I have watched. All the time worrying how much damn waiters in my restaurant are stealing. Uh, help me, cousin, I beg you, help me. Don't be damn fool, man. Now, on your feet. <laughs> Look, Rani is 17, an adult almost. Uh, but you, you are not knowing London. For women it is wicked. Dangerous place. It is same in all big cities. Yes, but in London there are many men evil, sex obsessed. Girls like Rani, young, beautiful, can easily be killed by them. And girls can also leave home for slightest reason. I'm sorry, Vidur. I can do nothing that police cannot do better. Uh, also, I am here on business. Important business. Business is more important than girls' life. Eh? Everything all right, Goshi? Uh, thank you, yes. This gentleman is relative, distant relative. He is a... Uh, Vidur, I will visit with you uh, later, tonight maybe. Visit only? No, Ganesh, no, you will be guest. He stay in my house near, I will insist. That is not possible. I have already made hotel reservation. Easily cancel that, old man. Actually, would do us a favor. Use your room in case we've got the late come. Then all is settled. Uh, here is card with address. It is near Marble Arch. Once there, anyone will give directions. So, Ganesh, at last you are coming. And without overcoat. Come, by fire, before you are catching death of cold. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Dutta. Weather is changing most suddenly. Now sit. <sighs> tea. You must have tea. It will warm you. Oh, it is imposition, Mrs. Dutta. Then we have rested on only downstairs. <sighs> we do Yes, he is just coming. Now please send waiter with tea. It is done. <laughs> you are most kind, Mrs. Dutta. Mrs. Dutta, such formality. Please, call me Nera. <laughs> with your permission. Something is wrong? No, no. <laughs> it is this room, uh, this uh, decor. You are not liking? Furnishings are most luxurious. Silken ghadis, carpets from Mirzapur. But the pictures... Shiva, Lakshmi, Krishna, uh, the scent of sandalwood, incense, uh, they are reminding me very much of temple. My husband is a very religious man, Ganesh. Everything he is importing from India. Downstairs even he is making a prayer room in honor of Ramakrishna, going down night and morning to make puja. No, nothing English will he have in this house. He is allowing gas fire. Without it we would freeze, but nothing else. Except his medicines. Medicines? Cupboard there is full of bottles. All the time he is taking. How? Chai liadi hai. Mer pani. Restaurant is busy. It is very full. But Vidur is saying he will come very shortly. Very shortly. All the time. Counting, checking, worrying. No wonder he is always having sick stomach. And listening to no one. Not to me. Not to Peacock. Peacock? So Vidur is not telling you her name? Peacock is Rani. It is name given her by school friends. But Peacock is male bird. Even so, it is a good name for her. She is a fine creature, proud, beautiful, and so clever. In England, 
only six months, yet knowing everything, speaking English so well, they are giving her lead role in school play, and so popular that everyone in her class, English girls, are accepting her as leader. <laughs> An excellent achievement. And why not, when my peacock is knowing more about England than all of them? You are knowing about Rara skirt. <laughs> Protima is showing me photo in fashion magazine. Always she wore them. Not in school where it is forbidden. Only after. You must find her cousin. Bring her back. You are our only hope. Maybe. It is three weeks since Rani is missing. Since he made her go with him. He? Who is he? So Vidor is only telling you half story. You are not knowing. Peacock was abducted. Murdered, missing, abducted. Story is changing all the time. Now who is abducting? And have police been informed of culprit? Police have been told all right. And? They are satisfied he did not do it. Who did not do it? Johnny Bull. Who else? Johnny Bull, the pop singer? You are saying he has stolen the peacock? I know it. How? She was in love with him. <laughs> so is my wife. Millions of women, all in love with him. But do millions know him? Peacock? She knew this Johnny, this Johnny Bull person? Very well she knew. She's meeting him in Calcutta first, when he is making world tour. That is the reason she is coming to England. She saw him in England also? In his flat she was constant visitor. And now, now he has taken her. You have evidence of this? Good evidence. In plenty I have. In her room. Blank walls, Mira. They were not blank when Peacock was here. On every wall. Here. Here, there, all photos of Johnny Bull, and underneath written in her own hand, words of all his songs. All night, lying on that bed, she dreamed about him. You do not believe? What I believe is not important, Mira. What is important is proof. And missing pictures of Johnny Bull, that is not evidence of crime. Ah, get in. Ah. Bloody devil, it is cheating all the time. But no matter, you are here and you will stay and enjoy it. Once my duties at conference are over. Oh, of course, of course, of course. And we will do our best to make you feel at home. Completely at home, eh? You see how we try to keep the West outside these doors? I had noticed. But I also wish to see London. The Tower, Buckingham Palace, Big Ben, New Scotland Yard. Great, you must. But how can such things match beauty of India, eh? The Taj Mahal by moonlight, caves at Ajanta... Such paintings. Nothing here compares. Husband, please. We must not bore Ganesh. He must be tired. It has been a long day, yes. You will sleep well in here, in my peacock's bed. But first, you must see the letter. A letter? It is some stupidity girl is writing. Stupidity? My peacock is in the hands of a doctor and you speak of stupidity? Cousin Ganesh is here to help. How can he until he's seen letter? See. Evidence. Telling me she has gone to Johnny Bull. She is writing five words only. Five words is enough. It says she is going to Johnny Bull. Clearly it says. No, letter refers only to lover. There is no mention of Bull. Johnny Bull, he was her lover. Rani, uh, she has not signed this. Why should she? Why? We are knowing her writing. This is her room. A note was placed for all to see. Here, on table, in front of makeup bottles. All day it was here. And what time uh, was it found? It was late afternoon. Oh, no one entered room before then. Only Mira. On Fridays, mornings, I go to Drummond Street shopping. Oh, to Indian food shops only. Eh? When I returned, I come here to clean, tidy. Yet you did not see the note? No. Oh, takes notice of things written in English. Eh? Well, obviously you did. Only because stupid girl is late back from school. Mira, I am worried. So I see, I read. Yet when you are finding, what terrible things you say. Only that creature has run away. That it is caused by English ways, her English friends, English clothes. Wearing only tight jeans, eh? T-shirts and raskets, cousin. Eh? Ra raskets, eh? Yes, ra raskets. And how well she is wearing no. them. No. How badly she is wearing them. No wonder it is the way she ran, eh? And no. Abducted, yes. And by this Johnny Bull. But now she will be found. Our cousin will find her. Mira, you must understand my position. My time is limited. But for sightseeing, you have plenty of time. Yes. Now, if it is the real truth you want, you are only asking for trouble. Much trouble. 
And I have no wish to be involved. Not when I have important job to do. No, cousin. It is not the important job. You are afraid of trouble. Trouble with Johnny Bull because he is famous. Trouble with English police because they are barasabs. Trouble. No, I am inspector of police. Have men under my command. You think I would let such things interfere with me if I did not want? Very well. Against my better judgment, I will make time. Achya. Investigate. Try and find this girl. Eric, uh, try. Try. No, cousin. Definitely you must find. Otherwise there will be no peace in this house. Not for me, not for you, not for anyone. Anyone, gentlemen, anyone here must read the signs. 1971, Britain has only 1,549 heroin addicts. In 1982, 4,700. And these reported cases only. But the real picture, statistics gathered by police, customs, organizations involved with drug abuse, indicate that today between 40 and 50,000 people in Britain are addicted and at least 70% on heroin. Heroin smuggled here from countries you represent. So, gentlemen, the problem concerns all of us. I hope over the next few days we can together go some way to resolving it. Thank you. Mr. Goatee? Mr. Goatee? Uh, miss, uh... We haven't met, but I'm Jill. Jill Rimmer. Old Marty tells me you're giving a paper. I will be reading a paper, yes. Well, I'm supposed to get copies of all speeches for the commissioner and delegates who might miss sessions. So if I could borrow your script, only till tomorrow. Uh, excuse me, Miss Rimmer, but you are a member of police force? WDS, Woman Detective Sergeant. Drug squad. Sort of PA to Smarty. For this conference, anyway. Then you will forgive me if I appear rude. I am a foreigner, also guest in your country, but I am also a police officer. And one important thing I have learned is that in any police force, especially when top echelon are present, it is wise, necessary, to observe protocol, to use correct rank when referring to superior officer. But maybe drug squad is law to itself? Not officially, not often. And the reprimand is noted, sir. Reprimand? No, no, Sergeant. I am a mere inspector. Officer I was referring to was your superior. Oh. The superintendent smart. He is aware of his nickname? He's very proud of it, Inspector. And it's the way we think of him. His team, that is. But the point is taken. And then matter is forgotten. Now, my speech papers. When will you be needing them? Now, if it's possible. Unfortunately, papers are still in my suitcase. I'm residing with relatives near Marble Arch. I could deliver them to your office later. Or I could give you a lift home. It's on my way. Oh, thank you. Uh, you are ready now? As soon as I get my coat. Don't you have one? Uh, this morning, sun was shining. And you didn't feel the cold. Well, you're a better man than I am, Gunga. Sorry, sir. <laughs> Please, no apology. Under present circumstances, Mr. Rudyard Kipling's poem is most apt, especially preceding lines. I'm sorry? Though I belted you and flayed you by the living God that made you, you're a better, better man, man than I am, Gungadin. <laughs> so that's why this super meal, Inspector. Bribery. Superintendent Kefka is expecting pressy of all speeches. And with problem of my missing relative. You might miss some of the sessions. Don't worry, Inspector. Photocopies of everything will be provided. It is most kind. I'm bribed easily. Your niece. Any ideas yet? Only that she has been missing for three weeks. Since October 21st, Trafalgar Day. Trafalgar Day? The day your Admiral Horatio Nelson destroyed the French Navy. English history. We are taught it in schools. <laughs> and they're better than some of ours. Is there any way I can help? For the moment, no. But since we are partners in crime, my first name is Ganesh. Well, you know mine. And now I really must go. Cousin, waiter is informing me you are here with the lady. A lady is police officer, Detective Sergeant Rimmer. Uh, my cousin, Mrs. Dutta. How do you do? Your niece, I am sorry. So Ganesh has told you. Good. So you are ready to go, yes? I'm afraid I have to. 
things to do at home. You are not going to see Johnny Bull? Mira, please. Sergeant Rimmer is not concerned with our problem. Now, you have asked me to carry out investigation. Yes, but... Then this highly experienced police officer, please allow me to conduct investigation in my own time, in my own way. And that way does not lead to Johnny Bull. To so where? First, I intend to search the girl's room, examine everything. Everything good she has taken with her, all she's leaving is rubbish. What a missing person discards is often important, Mrs. Data. How? When we are already knowing where Peacock went. You are not knowing about her letter? Letter? Saying she is going to Johnny Bull. Letter does not name Bull. So we must question whether she had other man she called lover. There was no other man. You seem very certain, Mrs. Data. Why? Because to me, Peacock told everything. Forgive me, but I've handled a lot of cases like this, young girls, and... They do hide things, especially from older people. From others, maybe, because they are afraid. But from someone who loves, understands them. A favorite aunt, never. No, no. My peacock told me all. More things even than she told her friends. These friends are special ones. Do you have their names? I am not caring for them, silly, giggling girls. To them, my peacock would tell nothing. It is still necessary to have names, cousin. From them, you will learn nothing. Oh, they will talk in plenty, gossip, idle nonsense. But for truth, for that you must see Johnny Bull. And the longer you are delayed... The more I am getting picture. Very well, persist with your obsession. But I, I cannot, will not accept it. So, it is as I predicted. You are afraid. But decision is yours. Yours. But I will find... Yes. Cousin, Mira, please, I did not... Let, let her cry it out, Ganesh. She obviously loves the girl. That is the tragedy. I apologize for my outburst, but Johnny Bull, there is no evidence that Bull is involved. Then someone else is, so you can't bow out. Not now. She's got to learn the truth, no matter how much it may hurt her. Mira, I, I'm sorry, I... Uh... Peacock's belongings... I was looking. But uh, now you will wish to sleep? Uh, no. Uh, wait, please. I have had second thoughts. Uh, I think it is time to visit local police. Her clothes, she did not take them with her? So many things she had, it is impossible to take all. Uh, but the police looked, uh, examined everything? The woman policeman. For half an hour she was here, looking into cupboards, drawers saying that in England many girls disappear, that police can do nothing. <laughs> Sergeant Rimmer is explaining the situation to me. In England, girls can leave home, go where they will after the age of 16. And if they are not wishing to return... And how do we know that if police do nothing? A crime rate in London is high, Mira. Police are also much below establishment. No doubt that is reason why investigation has not progressed. But I will see investigating officer. And what will you hear? That they are satisfied no crime has been committed? That Johnny Bull is best of men only? That case is closed? Cases are never closed, cousin. So please, the address of the police station. Johnny Bull's address I know well. Sweet P, Carlton Towers, SW1. Thank you. That will be most useful in due course. And the police station? Carlton Towers is in Sloan Street. Number 137 bus is going there. So, you will not give me address? Your husband, where is he, please? He cannot be disturbed. Not while he is making puja. Then tell me address. It is not necessary. That is my decision. Very well, then. I will disturb your husband, no matter what he is doing. Sunali, <laughs> Uh, your meditations? Ah. I'm sorry to disturb them. Ganesh, by enter, enter. I am hearing you are seeing woman, policeman woman. She is advising you well? She is personal aid to senior officer at conference. And yes, she has advised me. And that is why I'm here. Ah, to praise it. To be cleansed from effects of this degenerate land where I am forced to earn poor living. But at least you will be going home, not having to witness kissing in public, drinking alcohol, eating beef. <laughs> I know what you mean. And there is no end, no end at all. You have not seen nightclubs. <laughs> no. 
open all hours. Women almost naked, taking business away from places that had the right to it. But soon... Uh, cousin, laxative medicines, too much can cause harm to stomach. In this country all the time I must take them. But soon, soon I will sell this place. Be rid of cheating waiters, wet tax people, naked women. Only pray that I live long enough. You will not find me wanting, cousin. But first I must visit local police, find out what they are doing. So, at last you are thinking, cousin. Excellent. But I am needing a dress. It is Trade Street, five minutes only. But from them you will learn nothing. Absolutely nothing. Nothing but facts, Commissaris. Last year it was 36 million visitors. We can't search them all. You found 300 kilos, Superintendent. A good average, I think. Good. It's the tip of the ruddy iceberg. You heard old Fierro's car on this morning, admitting that 30 tons of this stuff is hidden somewhere in Pakistan. We'll just wait till that lot moves into Europe. And with Amsterdam so near. So, once again, Holland has been blamed. And no one is blaming, Commissar. It's not at all. But uh, Dutch attitudes to drugs, you must agree, are pretty damn tolerant. My point exactly, Gertie. I am sorry, but we disagree. Will you excuse me, gentlemen? Certainly. <clears throat> you uh, seen anything of London yet? Unfortunately, no. My my relatives are there. Yes, I uh, forgot about them. Well, you ought to make time. A matter is in hand, sir. Your Sergeant Rimmer has offered me lift home. I understand short tour will also be included. In a rush hour. Well, hope you like living dangerously. And Inspector. Uh, sir. Try not to be late in the morning. Big Ben, Parliament Houses, Piccadilly, all covered with scaffolding. Whole perspective of London is changing. The tower? That's still the same. Do you fancy seeing it tomorrow? Yes, but your time? I feel guilty. Also for being late this morning. Look, first only smarty missed you. Second, the session was boring as hell. Third, you've copies of everything. And fourth, I'm enjoying it. So just relax. <laughs> it is difficult. I still have to convince Mrs. Dutta about Johnny Bull uh, that uh, he cannot be involved. That WPC you saw this morning, she's quite sure. The report was most explicit. Bull shares a flat with a woman, a Miss uh, Sandra Dolan. She has lived with Bull since September, was with him on October 21st, day Peacock disappeared. WPC's personal comments are also significant. Oh? Apparently, Miss Dolan is very much the boss. Besides cohabiting, she's also Johnny Bull's manager, has invested in him personally, so... So she'd hardly let Peacock move in on her territory. Precisely. Peacock, the girl is damned enigma. How? At the airport, on day I arrived, I met Porter, young Indian, but born in England. He was suffering from... Uh, you are familiar with term identity crisis? You mean he didn't know who the hell he was? He was mixed up. But Peacock, in England only six months, living in household that is completely Indian, yet able to throw off traditions, loyalties, adapt totally to alien environment. Perhaps even more than you realize. So I've done some checking as well. Do you know about the A4 computer? A4 computer? No, we had nothing like that in Bombay. It's an index. Lists any girl under 21 who's ever come to our notice. Peacock's on it. You're saying she has a criminal record? No, no, she doesn't have to. She's on the computer because she's come to our notice. Is known but not wanted. You can tell me reason? Yeah, it wasn't too serious. She's picked up in the West End, a disco check. The boy with her had a record, so... She... Guilt by association. Mm. Yes, I'm sorry. No, I'm grateful. Also, every piece of information adds to the picture. Will you tell Mrs. Data? Oh, only if I must. The uh, Royal Oak Estate, you know of it? I'm surprised you do. It's a council estate, a couple of miles from here. Not a nice area. Why? A local police interviewed Peacock's close friends. Uh, Patsy Morgan, Rennie Temper. They live there. And you want to see them now? 
To hear is to obey. You sure you're not wasting your time? The WPC seems she got nothing from them. Possibly because of her attitude. Also, I intend to see them alone. Oh, do you think a man can do it better? It is very probable. <laughs> Especially when man arriving on doorstep is simply grieving relative and not uniform symbol of authority. Peacock's uncle. Well, you're a bit different from the other one, right, Reen? Right. Honest. In that restaurant. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, ladies, the reason I am disturbing... Well, you don't have to be so formal. I'm Pax and she's Reen. Reen? Would you like some tea? Kettle's on. <laughs> Thank you. Very kind. I'll get it. Now, the reason... Well, to be pretty damn frank, back home in Bombay, I am CID officer. Oh. And as I am staying with my cousins, they are asking me to investigate. That's how someone did. Then it is question time. Now, you and Miss, uh, Pat were Peacock's closest friends, knowing her intimately. You had it cheap. It was nothing like that. Funny. Mm, just teasing. Tell him, Ree. Well, we'll start with me, really, at school. For our names, Reenie, Ranny. You know, sounding almost the same. <laughs> Bit of a giggle. And when Pat liked her, too. Oh, dear, it was fantastic. Of course. I couldn't have worn it, not with my shape. Oh, and then it was the way she walked. Dead straight with a, a sort of sway. But ever so proud. And that's why we called her Peacock. Mm. Well, after that, we just did everything together. Milk and sugar? Uh, milk only, please. Uh, please, uh, that music... Liked it, did you? Uh, singer is Johnny Bull. Who else? He was Peacock's favourite. She had all his discs. Want it on again? Uh, thank you, no. But I should like to know about him and Peacock. Like what? Things perhaps you did not tell policewoman. You know about her, then? I was at police station this morning. The WPC was not altogether happy with you. I'm oh, not surprised. Well, I mean, what in a list of Peacock's boyfriends? Every single one, understand? Stupid cow. Uh, something was wrong with question? She hadn't done her own work. Peacock only ever had one bloke. Johnny. He was her old world. That's why she let him have it away. Heavy to be? You know. First time was in Calcutta. You are telling me that Johnny Bull seduced Peacock? No, she seduced him. At least that's what she said. Well, it doesn't matter who did it. Thing is, she loved him. Came over here, bought new gear, everything he liked. Then what happens? He goes right off her in two months, and for some blonde slag. Uh, Sandra Dolan. Oh, imagine, Jack and Peacock for that old cow. Obviously, there was a reason. Yeah, old age, they both passed it. Well, it didn't worry Peacock, though. She couldn't stop loving him. Not ever. Well, she'd have given... Well, done anything to get him back. Yeah. Perhaps even staging disappearance? Too scary. And make him think about what he had lost? No. No. Well, she talked about it once, but oh, it wouldn't have worked. Why not? You never met him, have you? Uh, that situation will be remedied PDQ, I assure you. <laughs> then you'll see what he's like. Selfish, spoiled little bastard. Can't think why Peacock bothered. Got a fag on you? I am sorry. Oh, that's right. I'll nip down to the machine, then. Uh, and I must leave also. Uh, thank you for your kindness and being so frank. One last question. Uh, Peacock is young, in love with man who rejects her. Is it possible she may have taken her own life? Oh, suicide? Oh, no, not Peacock. She was tough, could handle anything. Except, perhaps, her emotions. Oh, she would have. Given off a chance. But... Yes? I don't want to think about it. About what? I told you, I don't want to think about it. You must, Renny, you must. Oh, come on, love. It's just... I ain't even told you. I don't think. Wonder whether Peacock's dead. I know damn well she is. And that some bastard killed her. I hope you didn't steal the crown jewels. Still, at least you're in time. Tower Bridge is opening. 
fighting, all right? Uh, a slight headache only. I have taken aspirin. But still no overcoat. Are you sure you've got one? Uh, please, Jill, I'm not in mood. Sorry. No, it is my fault. And after last night, soon as I got back... Mm, problems. Questions. First Mira, then Protima, uh, my wife. Expecting me to resolve case in two days. Phoning from Bombay. And it's not even as though you can reverse the charges. And after what Peacock's friends are saying... They didn't tell you anything. Well, nothing new. Correction. They confirmed one highly important fact. Oh? That Peacock was immoral, but not promiscuous. I believe girls were telling the truth. So, Peacock's letter saying she is going to her lover points only in one direction, back to Johnny Bull. Or to his alibi, that blonde of his, Sandra Dolan. Miss Dolan, I am not here to make trouble, but Peacock's relatives, they are convinced Mr. Bull is involved. Involved? They told him to his face he'd got her. Locked up in his harem, I suppose. <laughs> Naturally, I believe nothing of the sort. No, no. Mr. Bull, I dare, is totally ridiculous. No, no. My only wish is to placate her relatives. Get at the truth. The truth, Mr. Gote, is she isn't here and hasn't been. Not since I moved in, Okay. So look somewhere else. Uh, Miss Dolan, her relatives are desperate. Perhaps even enough to involve media. The press. Uh, you get my point. Bad publicity could reflect damn badly on Mr. Bull. That's blackmail. Uh, you think that? Oh, no, no. As one of Mr. Bull's greatest fans, I am only anxious for him. <laughs> on a wall here, gold, uh, platinum records, evidence of his talent. It's love, only love. Oh, superb disc. That one got him a platinum. What else do you like? Uh, going to my lover today. That toy is damn fine. Hmm, maybe you are a fan. Do you have a favorite? Oh, yes, personally. Uh, uh, love, love, love. For me, that was greatest. Yes, that put Johnny right at the top. Fifteen weeks of number one. Got him the Palladium, Vegas, Japan. And then goddamn India. Yes, maybe you'd better see him. Uh, thank you. He's uh, still in bed. Look, I'll talk to him. Stress the publicity angle. After that, we'll just have to see. Uh, we certainly will. Nothing must be allowed to interfere with such a great career. You're worried. She's worried. It's my career, man. How do you think I feel? Your career is in crisis, Mr. Bull. Mr. Mr. Bull. Sort of said you was a fan. Fans always call him John. Right. Johnny, nothing else. Look, if this is a nothing set-up... A set-up? Uh, no. I assure you, Johnny, I am damn keen at murder. Damn keen. Like so many of my generation. Yeah, and that's why he's got to change his image. I'm always telling him. A change? People of your generation don't buy discs, T-shirts, videos. It's kids. That's where the bread comes from. Bloody journalists. It's all their fault. Bloody stories that I'm past it. But the kids believe it. Undoubtedly, Peacock Rock will correct situations. It's a start. But the new one, Karma Sutra Lover, Del Freak. Well, what do you think? A harmonium is a very fine instrument. But that sound, you are buying it in India? Calcutta. The electronics, they're Japanese. But my gear, that's Indian. Benares silk. It's great, eh? Uh, even Indian Minister of Culture would be proud of such an Achkan. Achkan? That's what you call it. I like that. Look, make a note, Sandra. Use it in publicity or something. Oh. Yeah, they'll be back. They've got to. If situation is that critical, bad publicity must be avoided at all costs. That's the only reason we're talking, man. Uh, then solution is obvious. We must find out what really happened to Peacock. A reverse shape, three guesses. Little bitch. Uh, like all women, darling. Not like this one, and you'd better believe it. Uh, please, we are getting away from problem. Proving only that Johnny is not responsible for Peacock's disappearance. Night of October 21st. Where were you, please? Here. With me. I would prefer answer from Johnny. You know something, man? You sound just like old Bill. I said he was a detective. Yeah, you did, didn't you? I didn't think they had him in India. Uh, yes, we do. And when people disappear, we ask questions. Like, what were you doing on October 21st, Trafalgar Day? Trafalgar Day. Yeah, I remember now. 
Yeah, I was up Nelson's column. Well, rather Sandra was. Cut the bloody jokes, will oh, you? Sorry. Let us continue. Peacock, your feelings. What were they in months, uh, days uh, preceding her disappearance? I fed up to the bloody teeth with her. Arisen? I came on the scene. And because I need a change once in a while. Not anymore, you don't. No, right. Right. Wrong. So out. Go on. Naff off. Okay. Naff off yourself. Women. You've got to control them, man, otherwise it's plain bloody trouble. Uh, Peacock, uh, she was also a bloody trouble. Damn right she was. It's the reason I stopped seeing her. Uh, that is why she forced her way in here? Forced her way in here? No, never. You are saying after your association ended she did not try to see you? Uh, tell you she was pregnant? Oh, no. Look, you know her uncle with the restaurant? Well, he was on a blower right after she took off. Threats. I mean, every accusation under the sun, but not that one. Man, if she was in the club, he'd have pulled it. Yeah, and Peacock wasn't thick. I mean, she'd, she'd be on the pill for sure. But suppose she wasn't. Publicity would be damn bad for you. No, nah, no. Nah. <laughs> Keeping an Indian girl locked up. I mean, a, a slave. Well, that would be bad. But a paternity order, that would be great. I mean, it would, it would show those little slags you're not past it. I mean, it's almost better than getting busted. Busted? For possession. Hash, coat. No, no, that's no problem. That just proves you're part of the scene. And you are very definitely part of that scene. Maybe. Odor in this apartment. It has been worrying me. You're not shocked. Only by the choice of drug. It is afim. Opium. Yes? Bullseye. Hash. Acid junk. That's for jerks. But the pipe. It's the key to paradise, man. You have been smoking for some time? Since Bombay. Right on your doorstep. You ever try it? Opium is illegal in both our countries. You bring it from Bombay, perhaps? Risk being nicked? I'm not that stupid. There's no point anyway. I mean, I can get all I need here. But these questions... Ah, uh, ah. Uh, just Peacock. Uh, questions were purely incidental. A uh, Peacock, what do you honestly think happened to her? Don't know, don't care. Don't care? So her usefulness had ended. Well. Look, man, I don't mind using India, its music, anything. Not when it helps the image. But after your precious peacock and her relatives, you can keep bloody Indians. Every day in yeah. Bombay, Indian film stars, playboys, spoilt brats all. And I am damned experienced in handling them. Damned experienced. Right. Now you listen. So maybe I'll smoke a little. But your precious little peacock, you know what she was? Well, in Robin's Nest, Portobello Road, you crawl in now and you'll find out what she really was. Just a low-down, little, junky whore. DK cousin. Everywhere. Nothing but decay. So far I am not seeing Vidur. But then I have not yet been to Portobello Road. Portobello Road? It is street market only. Many times I am there, buying fruit. Stopping only when Peacock is showing how I am being cheated. Peacock? She knew the area well? Why do you ask? Because of what I learned today from Johnny Bull. You have seen, spoken to Johnny Bull? This afternoon. He also indicated that Peacock used drugs. Obtain them from a place called Robin's Nest. You know it? And why should I know such a place? Because often you are walking in Portobello Road, Robin's Nest is cafe, there for all to see. For all to see, is it? Woman, if I am going to Portobello, it is for business only, not to look in cheap cafes. It's such talk. It is pure waste of time. Time which should be better spent in prayer. Then maybe you should pray for eyesight. Only blind man can miss Robin's Nest. That man... I should go to him. No, uh, wait, please. Drugs. Did Peacock use them? I am not knowing. Her moods, were they changeable? With young girl, who is knowing? They laugh, cry, and I do not know signs for drugs. Johnny Bull, what else are you learning? That he is not involved with Peacock's disappearance. He knows very well. And you, you will get Peacock back from him. Are you not listening, woman? Now here, understand. Peacock's involvement with drugs, it has put whole new complexion on case. And if investigation is to continue, there is only one place to look. Robin's Nest. Hot and black for you. Twenty-five pence for me. There. Oh, terrible price of coffee these days. 
It's the same in my country. You own this establishment, Mr... Uh... Robin. Just Robin. Uh, your country. Pakistan, is it? India. Uh, sorry. <laughs> I hope you don't think I'm a prejudice or anything. No. Don't know the meaning of the word. Just here to oblige, as I always say. Uh, then perhaps you can oblige me. All you got to do is ask. Looking for anything special? A relative. She is missing from home. Oh, yes. A girl of about 17, known as Peacock. Nice name. I understand she was a regular visitor oh, here. Oh, I've lots of regulars. So you do not remember her? Or what she is buying? Buying? Sorry, now it's late. Closing time, sir. So... Understand me, please. I know this girl was a regular visitor here. Now, I am not a violent person, but... <laughs> what did you sell her? Here, come on, let, let go. Please answer question. Menace? Dex? Or is it smack? Heroin? You're mad. Me? Sell heroin to kids? Never. I have no wish to hurt you, but... Blues. Blues, that's all. Look, the kids around here, they're all on it. And if I don't supply, there's others, and they're not particular. I'm careful. Don't sell them too many, and only blues. They don't do any harm. Not really. Then why was Peacock killed? Killed? Wasn't in the papers. There are reasons. But it could make situation damn awkward for you. Me? I had nothing to do with it, I swear. Huh. The last time Peacock was seen was October 21st last, in this area. Are you denying she was here? October the 21st? Friday, was it? Yes. Well? Look, I didn't tell you anything. Promise? You have my word. Well, it's the Smith boys. They run this area, come every Friday, you know, to collect. Protection? Because of your sideline? And because I'm, well, <laughs> all started the day I bought this place. They walked in. Jack, he's the eldest, said I needed insurance. Well, I just told him what he could do. See that bird cage? I kept a birdie in it, a robin. Well, Pete Smith, he just pulled the bars apart. Grab the poor little bird. He has a dog, you know. He fed the bird to it. What has this to do with Peacock? Hmm? Oh, well, she was here one afternoon, five, six weeks ago. The boys came in. The kid, that's Billy, the youngest, started chatting her up. She was attracted to Billy? Well, she talked to him, but beyond that, of course, Billy didn't give up. Most evenings they meet in here. He'd ask her out, just harmless chat. And she always refused? She was very polite. Said she had a regular boyfriend, didn't want another. Then I do not understand point of story. Ah, the point is, she did go out with him once. The Friday you say she disappeared. It's the last time I saw her. At what time was this? Oh, now, uh, 7, 7.15? Now, I never told you. Billy Smith... Where does he live, please? You're not going to the house. It is essential. But they'll know. Look. You will tell me the address <laughs> now. No, no, please. Look. All I know is they live with their mum. But where exactly? And that's honest. But, but she's in the phone book. Ada Smith. A phone box. There's one just across the road. You are being very sensible. <sighs> it's on your own head. Have no fear. Source of information will not be revealed. Oh, it's more than that. Jack, Pete, they're... Well, they're a bit prejudiced. They do not like black people. Right. Makes it ever so difficult. Well, colored gentlemen come in quite often. For drugs? The yeah, same as anyone else. Except for one. Indian gentleman. Yeah, maybe you know him. He was related to Peacock, too. Related to Peacock? Yeah. Short, chubby gentleman. Round glasses. Always wears the... Ethnic garments. He buys drugs from you? As a special order. Opium, that's what he likes. Eats it, just as it comes. Vidur? And you had no idea? Vidur is using opium orally. Obviously to eliminate smoking odor. But you are right. I am totally missing other signs. Dilated pupils, his need for laxatives. Chronic constipation. It is classic symptom. And there I am thinking that he is praying only to combat Western ways. Praying? <laughs> no, it is only excuse to have private room, keep addiction secret. Vidur, nothing more than pathetic old Afimbala. What? Afimbala, 
Hindi for uh, opium addict. Inspector, I understand you want a word. Uh, five minutes only, Superintendent, sir. Well? Uh, Mr. Smart, sir, for last two days, for reasons which are personal, I have been involved in certain investigations. Oh? And what I am learning may give you great personal satisfaction. Last night, inquiries took me to Portobello Road, to cafe establishment called Robin's Nest. Were you aware of this, Sergeant Rimmer? Uh, just five minutes ago, sir. Oh, I see. Inquiries were made by me, sir, at damn personal level. And what I am discovering is that the that man... the little poof who runs the place is a pusher. But not only that, sir, also that his activities... Extend no further than I let them, and only until I get a lead on his supplier. So, Inspector, I hope to hell you haven't balls things up. So now, if you'll excuse me, we both have work to do. Honestly, Ganesh, to tell him. It is precisely what I would do in Bombay. Inform superior officer of illegal activity. Well, your methods weren't exactly legal either. Fortunately, no real harm's been done. Jill, drugs, involvement with addicts are obvious reasons for Peacock's disappearance. As trained officer, I know this. But to stop investigation now... Well, the superintendent didn't say that. But inference was there. Also, there is Superintendent Kefka. Possibly even now my stupidity is being reported to him. Oh, not a chance. Not smarty. He tore you off and that's that. And since he didn't give you a direct order, I suggest you press on. Good you uh, It is Mr. Billy Smith. He's my brother. Billy, glad to see you. Hang on. Here? Yeah? Uh, please, my niece, uh, Rani. I believe you are a friend of hers. Rani? Oh, you mean Peacock? Uh, precisely. She is my niece. Yeah? Nice bit of stuff. I haven't seen her about. Uh, that is precisely a reason for calling. I am trying to find her. I uh, can't help you then. Uh, when was the last time you saw her? Uh, please. Last time? Oh, yeah, it must have been, what, two, three weeks ago at Robbins. Uh, you also took her out? This girl, yeah, up west. Hey, what's all this about, then? Only that Peacock has disappeared. Your brother may have been last person to see her. Oh? Huh? Tried her boyfriend, have you? A boyfriend? All she was ever on about. Not no different that evening, either. But she wasn't having it, so I dumped her. So you did not take her home? Said I would, she didn't want to. So I took her to the tube, what's the turf. What's up, ma? Oh. Exactly. What's Excuse me, but on evening in question, you were with your brother? Yeah, till I left the camp. A peacock? She was all right then? Norman? Yeah, he got me away as usual. Talker she was, especially when Billy was about. A singer called Johnny Bull, she also mentioned him? Oh, he was a boyfriend, wasn't he? he? Used to drive Billy spare while she went on about him. Let's sort him out. Right, grab him, Jack. Carry it, yeah. Please. Right, now. Oh. Get it. What? What? Get in there. Here. Now then. Yeah, Jackie, he's overcoat summit, isn't it? <laughs> from the islands of Calcutta, right? That where you nicked it? It is gift from my wife. Well, <laughs> it is gift from my wife. What you got under it then, sunshine? Jungle gear? Piece of rag tucked between your legs, eh? <laughs> You're free to look. Now, do you wish me to remove trousers also? To make sure my skin is same colour all over? You're yeah, a bleeding nutter. Right. Who are you working for, then? Uh, well, uh, I am not with anyone. Well, I heard different. And there's no walk coppers in this manner, so if you ain't old Bill, who are you? Uh, well? Peacock. She's a relative. I'm trying to find her. That's uh, your problem. Uh, but asking questions about uh, us. Now, that ain't on. Uh, but if you did not harm Peacock... You have nothing to fear. Well, we've nothing to fear. Full bleeding stop. But you, mate, you have. And so as you don't forget, <coughs> that's for openers. Now get out and stay out, understand? Yes. My well, we're good. Yes. No, it's too good for you, mate. Besides, you wouldn't want me to forget you now, would you? Going in alone. I was just asking for trouble. Uh, Jill, only thing damaged is personal pride. With these bruises, and keep your head back. Well, just hope they fade before Monday. I take it the rest of you's all right. 
back is a little sore, but uh, not... Ah, miss, uh, cousin, Mira is telling me <laughs> not finding peacock, but losing overcoat also, huh? <laughs> what you must do now is put in claim. Claim? Insurance. You have insurance? From travel company, yes. So put in immediate claim. Buy new coat. I am claiming all the time for everything. Customers, waiters, always stealing. And I am not person to take losses lying down. Now, what news of Peacock, eh? Here is a full report of my findings, cousin. You may do with it as you will. You are stopping investigation? Why? I have reasons. Things I am learning at Robin's Nest. At Robin's Nest? And information is in this report? Relevant facts about Peacock only. Now it is necessary to inform Mira. So it is Robin. He has taken my peacock. Mira, no one has taken peacock. Understand, please. Police investigation is largely a matter of experience. It is also a matter of pride, finishing job you have started. Yes, but you are not understanding. Conclusion is that peacock is no longer alive. Trail ends with Smith brothers, a damn bad lot. But it is up to police to discover if they are murderers. They haven't killed anyone so far, not that we know of. Precisely. But to discover their capability, obtain further evidence, requires me to see them again. Risk further personal assault, knowing full well they will do it. Oh, no. You should not go to Smith Brothers. Then for once we are in complete agreement. It is Robin. He has Peacock. It is him you must see. Mira, maybe you are not understanding my words. All evidence indicates Peacock is no longer alive. Robin, it is Robin. He is keeping her. Oh, Mira. Very well, if I must prove it. Perhaps there is one who may know and who will not cause me bodily harm. Back here after last night. Me boys wouldn't like that. Your sons are not here, Mrs. Smith. Pubs ain't closed, are they? But you wouldn't know about that. Savages don't, do they? Uh, no, no. Uh, but it is great pity they are out. Uh, matter is most important. Oh? It concerns a girl, Peacock. Oh, Billy quite fancies her. Uh, you know she is missing. Billy did say something. Good riddance, I say. Uh, yes. Uh, Billy, he did not tell you about night of October 21st. Tell me. I'm not senile, love. Not yet. Of course he told me. Uh, uh, please, then, you will tell me. I don't see it's any of your business. Uh, please, it is most important, I know. Night of October 21st. Well, it wasn't the night exactly. It's more like all day. All day? Well, I suppose the night was important. But that was the beak's fault. Thinking old Bill had something on my boys. I am not quite understanding. Well, I'm telling you. The boys went out as usual. Well, you know, collecting. Well... They had a bit of bother at one place, got nicked. And when they come up, the beat refused bail, remanded them in custody. Well, their brief got it sorted out next day, but it still meant a night in cells. Your sons, on night of October 21st, they were in custody? You are certain of this? Well, see for yourself, the calendar. Dates marked to remind me the only time my boy has ever spent a night in the nick. Now, I'm not likely to forget October 21st. Never. I never lied. Not about Billy. I wouldn't. Then answer again, please. October 21st. Peacock and Billy. That was the date you saw them here? Evening they left together? I told you that yesterday. And you are certain time was about 7.15? About then, yeah. So Billy was in two places at the same time? Here and in the Nick? Yeah. What's that? I fancy that. Well then, <laughs> he couldn't have been here, could he? He just said he was. Well, I made a mistake. No, you did not make mistake. You were trying to cover tracks. What tracks? Your dealings with Peacock. That you had more dealings with her than you are admitting to me. And because you were frightened, you talked to Pete Smith, arranged for him to do what you could not do yourself, have me beaten up. That is the truth, no, yes? No, no, and look, I've no idea what you're getting at. Have you beaten up? Why? Because of what you were selling Peacock. 
It was not blues only, was it? No, hard drugs were involved. Well, I didn't say keep your voice down. As soon as you start talking. All right. Yes, she wanted some other stuff, but it wasn't for herself. For who then? That boyfriend of hers. Honest. In here, moaning, pestering, willing to pay anything. Cash? Well, I'd hardly be interested in anything else. A young girl? You are not curious where her money is coming from? In this area, <laughs> safer not to ask. But her. Uh, on and on, crying, saying it was the only way she could get the bloke back. So you gave in, supplied her? No. I do have some principles, you know. Now, as I told your friend here, there are some things I'll never sell. Well, not to kids, anyway. Now, said her boyfriend could come over personally. Did he? <laughs> never thought he would, though. Why should he win? Well, let's say he has his own sources. You told Peacock this? Would she listen? No. Just couldn't get rid of her? No. Then I suggest that is exactly what you did. Get rid of her. Me? Hey, you think I killed her? She was being a nuisance. It's a damn good motive. Right. Oh, yeah. You, you could fit me up there, all right. But opportunity. I had to have that, didn't I? It'd be easy, wouldn't it? Stupid kids. Customers in and out from seven in the morning till two at night. Oh, yeah. Just kill someone between cooking and cleaning and then hide the body in the sink, I suppose. Oh, you must be joking. Really joking. We'll be laughed out of court. Anyway, Rob is not the type. No guts. I had already reached a similar conclusion. So, once again, finger points directly at Johnny Bull. Yes, maybe it is time to... Uh... Have an early night. Now get in there. Hot bath, two aspirins, and forget everything. Watching, checking... For restaurant owner, work never stops. You think maybe it is easier for police officer? No, excuse me. Protima, I have letter to write. Uh, telling her of progress? Also of what I have seen of London. So you have done nothing about my peacock? There has been some progress. And you are not telling, eh? The criminals called Smith. You went to their house again, yes? I spoke to their mother. She is telling you where they have my peacock? They are not keeping her, Mira. I was certain of this even before I went. Then why did you go? Reason is obvious. It is only overcoat he is concerned with. But even that he is not getting it. No, cousin, I am not getting overcoat. Oh, they have that all right. But they do not have peacocks. But to be sure, eliminate them, I had to visit house in their absence. But still run considerable risk. And you, you are telling I am doing nothing. To discover that someone is not where you think is not very helpful. But to find where they are, surely that is the point. No, only point is, if I am right and Peacock is dead, who killed her? The girl. Girl? What girl? Yes, that girl. She could have killed my Peacock. They could have killed her together. Who could have killed her together? Johnny Bull and his woman. Sandra? Uh, yes, yes. And, and from what you are telling us about her, she is obviously worst type of Westerner. To be with man of Johnny Bull's caliber, producing decadent music from his mouth only. It is scandal. Scandal. No, scandal is only coming from you. Accusations made without single shred of evidence. There is evidence in plenty. So, Mira, you are knowing more about investigations than highly trained police officer. Very well. Johnny Bull, Sandra. Why would they kill Peacock? And where do I find evidence? Not in places you are looking. When I have covered all areas? And found only those who did not take my peacock. Now you must look for those who did. Mira, to find person who did not do something is other half of finding out who did. Like two sides of a single coin. And I have been looking at both. Inspector! Uh, Inspector! Uh, Mr. Smart, sir. Try to catch your eye all morning. Well, enjoying the show? Only regret is that Protima, uh, my wife, is not present. But it is a most welcome change from drug topics. <laughs> All work, you know. Oh, by the way, our little cartridge, uh, apologies. Oh, no apologies necessary, Superintendent. In fact, vice versa. No, it was courteous of you to keep us informed. Jill told me about your problem. But uh, missing girls. All we can do is put the word out. Hope they'll show up. Dead or alive. Bluntly. Yes. Now, um, about this afternoon, there's a slight change in schedule. Superintendent Nam Sung's been recalled. Leaves for Hong Kong tonight, so I thought he could switch with you. Means you'll be on tomorrow. Um, 
if you agree. Naturally. The change will present no problem. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me, please. <laughs> well, don't say I didn't warn you. Still, at least you're taking precautions. Uh, precautions? Wrapping up. Damn nice overcoat, too, if I might say so. <laughs> I am buying it only this morning uh, from Regent Street. Shop recommended by Sergeant Rimmer. <laughs> Obviously thinks you're made of money. Thought she'd have suggested my place. You are also owning shop, Superintendent? No, no, just where I get all my stuff. Wholesale warehouse in August. Stocks, everything. So, a uh, China tea set? A gift for my wife? They would have one? Dirt cheap, too. Never tell they were export rejects. It is incomprehensible. Officer of Mr. Smart status in top salary bracket going to such a place? Even boasting about it. Why? There's nothing wrong with the stuff. When they are rejects? No. Gift from such a place would not be correct for Protima. Well, don't tell her. You are missing the point, Jen. Protima is a wife of highly respected CID officer, having to entertain wives of senior colleagues. And if they get even one inkling I am buying rejects, personal prestige is totally lost. It is simply difference between our cultures. And never the twain shall meet. See, I do know some Kipling. Still, I think I've done something to change the situation. Most definitely. Problem with everything is time. And for me, that is running out. But I have some consolation. Oh? That time spent searching for Peacock may not have been totally wasted. But even to prove this requires assistance. Cooperation from highly competent woman police officer. The inspector's such a fan of Johnny's, and when I heard he was recording a video here... You thought of me. You know, we don't normally allow visitors. And then your cooperation is even more appreciated. Just say I owe you one, Mark. Now, uh, coffee. And if uh, you and the inspector park yourselves here... You ever been in a TV studio, inspector? Only film studio, but uh, techniques are similar, yes. Oh, not too different. Uh, now, we're in master control here. Means I can monitor everything. Pictures from all the studios, sound, the lot. Uh, so it is possible to watch Johnny Boy? Oh, no problem. There. What a house, The man Robin himself. Time. Uh, nothing, nothing at all. Except you're supposed to be seducing the bird, not giving her a gut egg. So, love, if it's possible, let's have some feeling. Smolts. Okay? Anything you say, love. But right now we'll take it from twelve. Rolling now. I think we've done seventeen ruddy takes already. Everything's Coffee. okay. Oh, thank you. Because I've got this whole new system, yeah. The Karma Sutra way. Six hundred. Cut it. Cut it. Take five, everyone. Stoned out of his mind. Johnny, love, we'd better have a word in private. Your place or mine? I'll oh, just naff off and find Sandra. I want her here. And on a double. Full of charm, our Johnny. You weren't hoping to see him. On TV screen is more than enough. Uh, just one thing. Johnny, he is not using music? Oh, it's there, all right. Uh, there. Studio control room. See the tape machines? Well, the music, uh, backing tracks on tape. Johnny hears it over headphones, sings, and our friend with the beard, the sound engineer, re-records voice and music together. Uh, hang on. Ted, uh, can you run some music for us? So everything ends up on one master tape. Well, that's putting it very simply. It, oh, there. Uh, it is It is type of uh, playback technique, like in film studios. Right. So Johnny recorded harmonium solo earlier. Johnny? Oh, no. Need real musicians for that. In fact, some countrymen are yours. Damn good they are, too. But Johnny's harmonium, it is damn good instrument. Electronic. Uh, thanks, Ted. It's a box of junk. Hasn't been right since he got it. Not that he can play it anyway. But what he spends on it, Ruddy Big Ed sends it back to Bombay for repair. Good for the image. Balls. Well, uh, if there's nothing more... No, and uh, thank you. Visit has been most informative. Good. Well, uh, drop in again any time. Uh, be seeing you, Jill. Playback technique. Do you really know about it? Techniques were studied with top film director in Bollywood. Bollywood? Uh, Bombay studios are known as Bollywood. And uh, as I personally am knowing many top stars, 
I am damp frequent visitor. Of course not. It's got to hit number one. Sandra Doran, I've no wish to see her. Fire exit. It's this way. Wait, leave door ajar. Look, you've got to calm him down. Even I can't work miracles. Neither can I. You should have seen him this morning, scared out of his skin. Oh, he's been like that ever since he saw that crappy Indian. Indian? Said he was a fan. An Indian, eh? Hey, that could be great publicity. When the guy suspects Johnny of murder? Oh, look, he hasn't been that stupid. I'd know if he had. No. <sighs> you know how I got him here today? Stuffed that opium pipe of his down the loo. Otherwise, he'd still be in dreamland. But murder? Uh-uh. <laughs> Not the way he's been. He couldn't even murder a lyric, let alone some stupid Indian cow. Well, that's Johnny off the list. A picture painted by Miss Dillon is very clear. It also confirms personal belief that Johnny Bull was not Peacock's abductor. Eliminates Sandra as well. So who? Robin? The Smith boys? Even person or persons unknown. Maybe there never even was crime. Peacock simply wished to escape. It is ironic. Ever since I was a young child, having English teacher, only ambition was to come here, see the real England, walk on green grass, sail boat in Regent's Park, touch snow for first time. <laughs> now, all I want is to be home. Only another 48 hours. Funny, you know. I'm going to miss you. We have become friends, Jill. Also, you have open invitation. Protima, I would welcome visit. <laughs> Sorry. Later. You will be returning to Scotland Yard? Yes. Why? Because I have not forgotten Mr. Johnny Bull, our last meeting. And after what I am learning at TV Studio, maybe it is time you looked at other side of his coin. Now, you're all prepared, Ganesh, so relax. Smart, you'll be here soon. Relax? It is difficult, but... <laughs> Mr. Smart, you informed him about my suspicions? That's taken care of. Oh, look, what's here? Morning. Morning, ladies and gentlemen. Mm. Apologies. Problem which even I couldn't control. British rep. <laughs> <laughs> Main thing now is to catch up. Well, as you know, Superintendent Kefgar is unable to be with us. But to speak with his voice, to provide us with a forceful analysis of the international drugs market, we do have his deputy, Inspector Ganesh Gote. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen... <laughs> Excuse me. Ladies and gentlemen, the copy is recognized world over as symbol of peace. To remind us of war which was to end all wars. But same flower today... Excuse me. Uh, same flower today is also a symbol of war we are fighting together. Because from copy Criminals produce opium, uh, opium, uh, which by simple laboratory process can be tra <laughs> transformed into morphine. Morphine, which so, to keep monkey off back addict has only one solution. To find my fish. Excuse me. I will read that again. To keep monkey off back addict has only one solution. To turn to... So, not only drugs, but prostitution, extortion, and murder are added to scourge which began with simple and harmless flour. Thank you. Thank you. That gentleman is all. Very well. Maybe I am not best dialogue reader. Ignore what I have read, but you will listen to this damn well. In few days I have been here. I have seen drugs. Drugs manufactured in Bombay being sold openly to all and sundry, being told by top star Johnny Bull where to buy. 
Yes, drugs from Bombay here. And I, CID officer, am not realizing what is going on under my very nose. It is nothing short of a scandal. Scandal. Ganesh Gote, the great believer in protocol. Sometimes superiors must be reminded there is more to crime prevention than sitting round table, using overseas trips simply as excuse for beaner. Also, losing temper is excellent cure for cold. It is difficult to believe I am in the middle of London. I bet that reminds you of home. No, oh, Bombay Zoo only. But that, that I am hearing every day. There. See on opposite bank? Not Raggy Peacock. Escape from damn birds seems impossible. Isn't it? Beautiful, but such vanity. Look at the way he's dancing. That tail. It's incredible. But also very stupid. Why? You are not seeing second peacock? What it is up to? It's watching the crowd. To see where they are throwing food, then gorging before dancing bird even realizes. Oh, greedy but not stupid. To play dangerous game is always stupid. Greed is overcoming caution. And once dancing peacock realizes he is being robbed, greed. Yes, it is only possible reason. A record shop. We can find one nearby. Yes, Haverstock Hill. We could get off at Camden Lock. Why? Sandra Dolan. When I spoke with her, she gave titles of Johnny Bull's hit records. So. Significance did not register, not until now. And if my memory is correct, it provides last piece of jigsaw, the identity of Peacock's murderer. Mira, motive, opportunity. I'm sorry, but evidence is cast iron. No. You have nothing to say. You have said all. And now we must speak to your husband. I'll stay with you until the local police arrive, Mrs. Jatta. So, what is so urgent, cousin, eh? This western hurry-scurry is not my way. Time is very short, Mr. Datta. Well? Peacock, I understand she kept pictures of Johnny Bull on her wall. If questions are to be asked, then man should ask them. Very well. Pictures had titles of Johnny Bull's songs written under them. Mira told me about them first evening I was here. So, so? What happened to them? Who cares? Stupid girl was lovesick for Bull. Maybe she took them when she ran away. Listen. This one she did not take. You recognize it? Only that it is Western trash. It's called Going to My Lover Today. Well, well. It is exact words of Peacock's letter. Exact words. The note Vidor showed you, told you she had left. Yes. Cousin? I am not knowing what you are meaning. I mean that you killed Peacock. And then chance provided you with perfect way to keep your wife quiet. Throw police off track. A farewell note in Peacock's own writing. On the wall in front of you. Ah, cousin. You are top class police, Walla. So you should know that murderer must have motive. And you had a damn good one. Today I saw two Peacocks. One proud, dancing, oblivious to everything except adulation. The second, grasping, greedy, stealing every disgusting morsel of food that crowd is throwing. Only then did I think of you. Realize that even proud, beautiful creatures can be greedy also, as Peacock was. Beautiful, clever, but also filled with overwhelming greed. She was like that, but where is my motive, eh? Her clothes. So many that you could not hide them all. Where did Peacock get money to buy them? I, I gave Peacock money. Yes, I have no doubt you were most generous. But Peacock's clothes were not cheap rubbish. And even after buying, she still had money in plenty. Money obtained from your husband. No. I would not give girl money. To buy rara skirts, prostitutes' clothing, it is rubbish you talk, rubbish. But you had no choice. Peacock discovered, as I did, that you are opium addict. Of him? This is true? Yes. Oh. Yes, everything is true. Blackmail. She would not stop. Always money, money. Threatening to tell police to tell you. Until one day she tried your proud spirit too far. Yes. Her body? 
You will show me where it is? It is in back garden. Ah, cousin, if only you had not come. But we are still relatives, also Indians together in this appalling country. Matter can still be settled, yes? Yes, by the proper authorities. Indian or British, a killer is a killer, and a policeman, a policeman. Well, at least you've got something for Superintendent Kefkar. He should be damn proud of you, Goaty, for solving two major crimes. Two crimes, sir? Didn't Jill tell you? Your tip about Johnny Bull, spot on. So, suspicion was correct. Repairs to instrument was excuse. Harmonium was being used to smuggle drugs. Two compartments filled with opium. A real box of Attention, junk. Attention, please. India flight 325 from Bombay. Ah. Will passengers proceed immediately to gate 19? Well, Air goodbye, flight, Ganesh. And take care. Yeah, thank you, Jim. Mr. Smart. Hopefully we will meet again. But uh, so you'll remember. Your overcoat. Cleaned and pressed. Overcoat? Rescued from the Smith brothers. Plus something else with them. A present for your wife. From both of us. For you, Protima. From top Scotland Yard officers. Oh. It is great honour. Oh. Teapot. Cups. And so beautiful. Royal Worcester. It is also very costly. Oh. And purchased from uh, the Oldgate. It is very fine shop, yes. Oh, so fine that when Mr. Smart is giving me invitation to visit, I refused. But Ganesh, to see such a fine place. Place frequented by top police officers only. No, Protima. I know my place. And to break protocol. No, that would not be proper. That was Inspector Goate Hunts the Peacock, a play for radio by Jeffrey M. Matthews based on the novel by H.R.F. Keating. Sam Daster was Inspector Goate, Sarah Neville, Jill Rimmer, Gerard Green, Vidor Dutta, Ursula Moen, Mira Dutta, and Jeffrey Matthews, Superintendent Smart. Sandra Dolan and Protima were played by Carol Boyd, Johnny Bull, Michael Prade, Robin, Alan Dudley, Pat, Catherine Helbert, and Reen, Moyer Leslie. Teddy Malloy was Mark and the Porter, Colin Starkey, Billy and the television producer, Shirley Stelfox was Ada, Henry Stamper, Superintendent Kefkar, David Van, Jack, and Dinesh Bardwaj, the disc jockey. Other parts were played by members of the cast. The song, Going to My Lover Today, was sung by Michael Prade. It was composed by Jim Parker and Wally K. Daly and produced by Jeffrey Hewitt. Inspector Goate Hunts the Peacock was directed in our Birmingham studios by Peter Windows. So I'm going to my lover today.